What's going on everybody? Welcome back and today we're going to be taking a look at the Nintendo 64 emulator for the PS Vita and this emulator was originally for Linux and PSP but it's now been ported to the PS Vita thanks to the Vita GL usage and the latest update on this emulator was back in May of 2022 or I'm sorry May 2020 and it's working pretty good. So let's take a look at this emulator and see those options and all sorts of different fun stuff when it comes to this emulator. And I really do appreciate you guys checking out my video today. Thank you so much. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 50,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for being here. So, uh, the Atlas X64 for the PS Vita. How good is it? It is pretty damn good. It runs very, very well. And there's not really much to it. All you have to do is just download it through one of your homebrew browsers. And you should be able to use it right away. Now, as far as your... Uh, N64 files, you want to make sure they are ending at .z64, obviously, and you should be able to run your games no problem. What I truly love about this emulator is that it has these different tags at the very bottom that you see there, and it shows us if the game is playable or not. And I just added what I had in my collection at the time, and for the most part, they all are playable. Now, there are going to be some, for example, Zelda, Majora's Mask, and Ocarina of Time will have a second tag called Slow. So the game is playable, but it will still not run at full speed, which is pretty good. I know that the community, the PS Vita community, was uh, asking for an N64 emulator for the longest time. Everyone on my channel was always asking me, hey, is there an N64 emulator? Can we play Nintendo 64 emulators? And thanks to Rene Ganamante for providing this emulator for us. And also everyone who worked on the original uh, Diatlas X64 emulator. Thank you so much. And now we have the opportunity to play some awesome games from an amazing console on the PS Vita. Uh, you can see here that I do have a somewhat good collection of games and some that I wanted to try out myself but one of the things that gets confusing with this uh, emulator is the options at the very top so you will have to use uh, the touch screen and move the uh, the pointer to select the different options at the very top and how you uh, open the options is pressing the left trigger button on your PS Vita and you can open up the drop menu the drop down menu. Uh, the most important thing is going under options and going to the custom ROMs path. You want to make sure that this is going to the correct folder on your PS Vita that has all of your N64 games because if you don't have this set up then you won't be able to play your games. It won't be able to read your memory card so you have to direct it to the correct path of your N64 games and you should be good to go. So all the box art you see there and all that information was not, I didn't provide it on my end. So the emulator itself started to download and uh, provide all that artwork for me, which is nice. And under emulation, let's check out emulation here. Oh, let's actually go back to options. I did want to cover something here, which is the web server. So this is a very interesting feature of this emulator where you can actually play your games uh, via the network or on your via uh, PC. So you can do it wirelessly. Uh, for me, I wouldn't recommend doing that because you might lose connection and the PS Vita is, it can only do so much, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a very powerful console, but not too powerful and I wouldn't recommend it. I I'd rather just have it on your SD card. These games aren't too large. Uh, you know, a couple gigabytes here and there, not a problem. And you'll have a pretty good library of N64 games. So just copy them over to your SD card and just play it like that. And not risk 
you know, going through a level, a hard level, you finally beat it and then you lose connection or something might happen. But there is a full guide on how to get that set up if you're interested. I'll have a link in the description down below so you can go check it out. It's a full guide on how to get set up with the web server and have some fun that way, I guess. Uh, under emulation, you have your CPU, your DynaRec config, high level emulation, expansion pack, frame limit, sync video rate, and sync audio rate. The one problem I did have with some of these games is that the audio gets kind of uh, funny or choppy. And I just tend to turn it off and play some music in the background or something. Uh, your graphics, you can change your aspect ratio, your brightness, your render, textures, all sorts of different things here that you can go through. And it's very important that you go through these uh, settings before you start playing the game because uh, some of these games do require these settings to be adjusted so that way it runs smooth for you. And we'll take a look at that list here shortly. You have your audio, your input, language, and extra. And again, you have to move your pointer using your touch screen or once you have uh, something highlighted like this, uh, you press the trigger button and you can use your D-pad to go up and down and it makes it easier, but just don't touch your uh, touch screen because if you move it then you'll kind of lose track of what you were doing and it gets a little bit tedious but not not too tedious it's it's not too bad uh, but yeah going to these games here let's take a look at one of them and let's see here I'm going to start uh, Ocarina of Time so let's see if we can do that pressing the left trigger button to launch the game and yeah, playtime, region, CRC, all sorts of different information there. Let's see if we can enable our, and there is my overclock plugin. And you can see the frames on the upper left hand corner through that plugin, or you can press select and open up the files bar at the very top of this game. And it's very interesting that you can access those options while you're in game. Pressing select will pause the game and open up the options and pressing select again will unpause the game and continue to show you the options there for just a few seconds and your frames and how well you're doing on the game. But you can see how Zelda's running at 20 frames. It's not too bad. I know in the past, uh, you know, it wasn't running at all. It was pretty bad uh, the first release when I covered it. Uh, I believe on the PSP, but anyways, it's still pretty solid. And again, you can press the select button, move your pointer, and we can close the ROM and go back to the main menu. So that is the emulator for the most part. And now we're going to take a look at the compatibility list because it's very important that you know this list and see all the games that crash all the games that have in-game problems, in-game plus, playable, and in-game minus is games that go in-game but have major issues that prevent it from going further early on. And then you have in-game plus, games that go far in the game but have glitches or have non-playable performances. So, uh, going through this list, there's a total of 473 games. And you can see the status of each one of these games on this list. Let's go to The World Is Not Enough, a very popular game. 007. Let's click on that link. And what's great about this list is that you can actually see what issues you may encounter and some updates on settings that could help make the game run smoother. So always make sure that you uh, go through this list and go through each one of these games if you're very serious on playing these games on your PS Vita. I, however, am going to play them on my Steam Deck. Not to brag about it, but... Um... So again, go through this list and make sure that you are able to run some of your favorite titles on the N64 emulator for the PS Vita. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, please comment down below. 
And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 50,000 subscribers. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys on the next one.